Hello. Hey. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. It's good to Hi. see you. And you. How's things going? You know, they're going. <laughs> I hear it's uh, unseasonably hot for Canada. It's uh, it's like Florida hot. Yeah, well, I'm well aware of that heat. <laughs> yeah, so I was actually supposed to be in Atlanta this weekend for um, Wrecking Ball. Okay. Um, and uh, I just I couldn't make it for whatever reason, but uh, I'm sure it's probably as hot or hotter there right now. So absolutely, yeah. <laughs> What's Kitty? Like? I see Kitty. Oh, a big fat one. Yeah, she's uh, that's me now. She's a mess. She's spilled rotten. Nice. So um, this is Stuart Green of Crawl, everybody from Toronto, Canada, right? Yeah. You guys are kind of spread out though, from what I understand. We are uh, we're sort of split between Toronto and a city called Windsor, which is on the border with Detroit. Wow. Yeah, Tom said it was like four or five hours in between some of you. Uh, yeah, yeah, three and a half, four hours. How yeah. do you guys manage to be able to write and practice and play? We we literally meet in the middle. We uh, It's that compromising where you sort of, uh, we, we meet two hours away. So... Uh, a city called London uh, in Ontario, which is right in between Windsor and Toronto. And so that's where we go to uh, make the magic. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, and from what I was reading, you guys have been together since 92, but then you kind of split and came back. What's, tell, what's the deal with that, the story of Crawl? Uh, so, uh, well, I mean, 25 years in a nutshell. Um, so yeah, we formed the band, Tom, Scott, and I formed the band in around 90, probably they got together late 91, I think I joined early 92, and then we, uh, we got a singer, um, in Toronto here through, uh, through, a, a one and a local newspaper. Um, we did that for a few years. I left the band in 95, uh, after we had some pretty significant success, I mean, by, uh, by Toronto and Canada standards. Um, so, you know, we, we put out uh, a couple of independent cassettes, then we did a, a CD. We had videos in rotation on Much Music, which is the Canadian MTV. Actually, I know what um, Much Music is. I've heard of that one before. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, and so we uh, we got nominated uh, for two years in a row. We were nominated for Best Hard Rock Video um, Canadian. Uh, we were up against some, you know, some pretty significant bands, which is probably why we lost. Um, but, you know, <laughs> just to be nominated was owner. So we did that. Um, and then around 1995, uh, you know, my life changed and... Um, I, uh, I left the band, and uh, they continued on with a guy named uh, Anthony Poto. Um, they put out a, a second CD, uh, which was songs that were, some of which were written when I was in the band, some of which were written with Anth. Um, they did a couple of Cross Canada tours. We toured a bit when I was in the band, but nothing like, you know, Crawl did sort of in the 96, 97 period. Um, and uh, then, you know, the, the usual story, you know, bands, you sort of, I mean, I think what happened with Crawl is, we, yeah, we sort of got to a level, and it was kind of like, you know, it was make or break time, and um, unfortunately, the music scene in Canada at the time was such that, you know, the biggest bands coming out of Canada were, you know, Bare Naked Ladies, Tragically Hip, sort of more um, straight ahead kind of rock bands, um, so for heavy rock bands like Crawl, there, there wasn't really a place, and so I think a lot of that kind of, you know, factored into, you know, the band sort of just kind of, you know, going their own way. Um, and around, I think, 1997 was probably the last actual crawl show um, until 2012. And um, so uh, Scott and I started talking in around 2011. Um, and we talked about sort of pulling the band back together. We, uh, we approached uh, Tom in, uh, in 2012, and he was originally... A little reluctant to do it, and I'm sure he would tell you that. Um, and uh, he, like me, hadn't played in a number of years. But once the idea sort of gets back in your head that, you know, hey, we had something pretty special, and, you know, we're at a point in our lives, at, you know, in 2012, which is, you know, we've moved along. And so, um, you know, the idea of getting a band back together is, is quite appealing. So we did, and we did that in probably uh, 2012. We, uh, we found a new singer, a guy named Mike. Mike Wolf, who um, we found through a friend of ours, Chad Valier, and uh, so we started working with Mike, and we started writing with Mike, and uh, it all just sort of clicked, so 
summer of 2012 was the first crawl reunion show. We did a show in Toronto, a little preview show, and then we did a full-blown reunion show in Windsor, um, which uh, which was great. It was amazing. So we've just kept going since then. I mean, it was, you know, the show in Windsor was uh, was um, a tribute show to Tom's mom, who um, was, she was, uh, Wendy was awesome. She was our den mother. She was, she was the band's mom. And um, unfortunately, we lost Wendy to, uh, to cancer. And um, so Tom thought, you know, it, it would be great if we could do a show in her in her name. We raised some money for, you know, cancer research, and we were really proud of that. And um, but it just, you know, it, it kind of felt like old times. So we and just sort of kept it going. And, uh, right, and so now it's when I like around the time you guys came out, what I consider rock now, like Godsmack, Disturbed, Papa Roach, it's all right. considered metal now not just rock and so i can imagine how hard it was for you because you guys were definitely considered like hardcore metal back then you know and to me you're you're not it's just metal mm -hmm. but still yeah. we're know. we're uh yeah we're we're in a weird place and this is, i think going back to sort of what happened to crawl in the early days was you know um we i i never really considered this metal um, but I don't come from the metal background, you know, Tom, Tom is, is our, is the band's token metal guy. Tom is, you know, he's, he's Sirius XF, uh, Sirius XF, um, Octane and all those channels that, you know, Total Octane fanatic, yeah, but he's probably a same, liquid metal. Right. All those, all those stations like that's, that's Tom and, and Scott too. Um, but at the time it was, Tom was heavily into Pantera and I was more, I was more sort of an old school punk guy. Uh, I also like prog rock a lot. Um, you know, Mike is a classic rock, more of a classic rock guy. Scotty's into the cure and all kinds of like gothy stuff. So, you know, we came like from, the base is covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so we sort of came from this weird place. And then when we, when it all came together, I guess, you know, we were playing stuff that in the 90s would have been considered grunge. You know, we, we got a lot of comparisons to like Soundgarden and, and Quicksand and Helmet, uh, bands that I think are awesome. And, uh, you know, it was we, we were actually fortunate enough to play with both Quicksand and Helmet back in the 90s, which was amazing. Um, so not not really metal, but then we sort of got booked on some like hair metal shows early on. It, it's been a weird ride, but, um, you know, we're, we're just all about sort of, you know, hard hitting rock and, you know, I, yeah, for me, speaking you know, of that, on your Facebook page, you guys in the short description, it says hard rocking thud and a sonic wallop. What the fuck is a sonic wallop? So, um, <laughs> that was us trying to be clever. Uh, trying no, it's to come clever, up but <laughs> Just trying to come up with terms that maybe sort of better described us to us. Um, you know, we're we're melodic. You know, we're we're hard hitting. Um, we we you know we have songs that are sort of dynamic in terms of you know being quieter and being louder. And then there's some songs that are just you know balls out like you know thud. Um, so the sonic sort of comes. I think it comes mostly from Tom's kick drum, to be honest. Uh, that's that's sort of where the thud really comes from. No, I, I mean the wallop, like a sonic wallop. What is a wallop? Wallop, well, wallops are, it, it, that's Tom. Tom is the wallop. <laughs> Tom and Scott together are, you know, this huge kind of, um, you know, really heavy bottom end. Um, you know, it's it's snapping, it's thumping, it's, it's all of that. It's just, it's... <laughs> But it really, the idea, I mean, and you know, is when it, we play... Is a wallop like oh, Canadian tan or something? I mean... It's a dictionary term for like, you know, smack, like bang, right? Like oh, a, okay. a, good, a good hit, right? So, um, you know, when we play live, we're often told to turn down on the stage because when we <laughs> practice, we practice loud. So um, that's sort of the, the, the wallop is sort of like the, you know, not yet, you know, hopefully. <laughs> I don't even know, I don't even know how I heard of you guys, but I know that since about 2013, I've been spinning you guys' music on my different radio shows. So it's pretty cool to be sitting here talking to you because when Miss Terry, hi Miss Terry, whenever she you know said that to set this up for us, um, I was like, oh yeah, I know who those guys are. I play their music all the time. <laughs> well, know? thank you. We we appreciate that. And we oh, you know we know that you guys have been good to us, and um, you know whatever possible we share on social and, and try and share the love. It's it's nice to be uh, it's nice to be you know liked. <laughs> oh, it is definitely. So tell me, tell everybody about the new EP, the Crockford Files. Sure. You mean this? That one, exactly. <laughs> um, so that is, uh, that's our second EP since reforming. Um, so we did, uh, we did Anticipate the Fall in 2000, 
13 or 14, I think we released that. No, 14 we released it. And um, yeah, so uh, Crockett Files and Unreal EP, it was uh, a batch of songs, uh, three of which were written with the band as it is now, a couple of which were written at a time that neither Mike nor I were in the band. Um, so uh, Smother Mary and Bangladesh were written with Anthony on guitar and Steve on vocals. And so, you know, times change, band members change. We thought, you know, well, let's 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 give these a try. And uh, you know, we've we've uh, we've sort of recrafted them in the in the image of Crawl in 2016. And uh, you know, I'm really happy with the result. I mean, we we did some rearrangement, we did some new guitar treatment. Um, you know, and so so that so the so the EP is uh, three brand new songs. Uh, mine, which is sort of uh, harkens back to, I guess, our. You know, our glory days, um, you know, that sort of standard drop D kind of, you know, riff rock that we, we did a lot of. Um, uh, Dead and Heavy Rain are new for us uh, in the sense that I bought a seven string guitar <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, started experimenting with that. So I don't play the seven string like, you know, a band like Meshuggah plays a seven string or well, I play probably like eight or nine strings, but, you know, bands that sort of play those um, those multi-string guitars, they tend to do a lot of kind of noodly stuff like, uh, you know, a band like Periphery or something like that. Um, I actually play the seven string like a six string and play chords down there. So everything just is ends it, up what being... Is the, it's got a lower, uh, a lower string than the actual yeah. six string? Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, it's a lower B. So oh. it's the standard six plus a lower B. So it's like um, a fifth, right? Yeah, and I'm not a, I mean, as anyone who's heard the band knows, I'm not a noodler. I don't do, like, you know, those solos, right? I'm not the guy from, uh, I don't know, Asking Alexander or some band that does, like, a lot of... Yeah, I don't do that stuff, right? So I just started playing the seventh string like a sixth string, um, came up with some interesting sort of riffs and, and chords, and uh, Scott, luckily enough, had a five-string bass, which has the low B as well. Uh, so um, we were able to match it all up, and so we... You're confusing we were, me with all these odd number instruments. I've heard of a six-string bass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we, uh, and, yeah, so we, we started playing around with the uh, instrumentation, um, and uh, I, I, I love those two songs. I think they're really amazing. I think they're, they're, they're very different from our older stuff. Oh, um, cool EP, man. I just reviewed it not long ago, so it was very, it's very yeah. cool. Yeah, thanks. It's, uh, and, and thanks for that. We, we, um, um, it's, it's different from Anticipate the Fall. I mean, it's, Anticipate the Fall was, was, were songs that were mostly written very quickly with Mike. Um, I had, you know, been playing on and off over the years and sort of come up with, with music that was probably a little faster than Crawl normally plays. So, you know, songs like Loaded and Rise, which are amazing songs and kill live, uh, those are songs that um, are probably a little faster than Crawl normally plays, but still in that drop D tuning. Um, and uh, so Anticipate the Fall was a very, very different raw sounding record. Some people like the sonics of it, some people don't. It was recorded very quickly um, and very much live off the floor. I really like the way it sounds. Um, but uh, this one, uh, Crawford Files, is much more uh, sort of like what we used to do, where we take time to arrange the songs and really, you know, think about the parts and sort of, you know, work them all out. And there's some, you know, some dynamics that we played with. Um, so it's it's a little this EP, I guess, is a little darker sounding than just Big Fall, um, both production wise and song wise. There's a lot more mood to it than you know just energy. There is energy. Yeah, very cool. How did you come up with the Crawford Files? Is there a story behind that? I, so, yeah, um, I don't, I, am I backwards in this? Like, can yeah, you? Yeah, it's or, fine. It's fine? Okay, so uh, the, um, this picture is a picture I took uh, outside the studio we were recording in. Oh, okay. And uh, so this is a street in, uh, in Toronto called Crawford Boulevard. Um, so Crawford uh, Boulevard is where the studio was. I took this picture outside I said, you know, and so we started joking around the studio. And a lot of what we do, we just, the band, as a side, a side note, the band, um, we laugh a lot together. We, you know, we, we have arguments and discussions, but we laugh a lot together. And so we have a lot of fun when we do things like name songs or name albums. Um, so, you know, this studio was on Crawford. And, you know, for those of us of a certain age, 
uh, there was a show on TV back in the 70s called The Rockford Files, which, by the way... Yes, I don't know. Every time I go to type in Crockford, it changes it to Rockford, and my yeah, damn thing so, drives me nuts. <laughs> so, it's this awesome cop show by, uh, I think Steve Bosch put it. Anyway, amazing theme song. It had this killer theme song. Anyway, so, uh, so I said, hey, what about The Crockford Files? And anyway, everybody immediately just started laughing and went, yeah, that's, that's great. So, um, that's, that's really where the name came from. It was, it was literally the name of the studio, and, you know, Rockford Files, Crockford Files, you know, for some for some people it was you know a good laugh and sort of a call back to you know uh, bygone era of television I guess that's very awesome hold on one second yeah of course Okay. I just have to make sure that I can only record 20 minutes at a time, so okay. I can't, you know, we're getting close to 20 minutes, so I wanted yeah. to go ahead and no stop it and restart it. Okay. Um, anyway, so we were talking about the Crockford Files. Okay. Um, what, is there a message that you're trying to get across to people here, and how would you describe, like, the music to people who haven't heard it? Um, uh, in terms of message, I mean, you know, Mike, Mike is, uh, Mike is our chief lyricist. He's, uh, he this this uh, like I say this EP unlike anticipate the fall was more um, you know like a song like rise is sort of about the state of the world uh, this song uh, this EP um, I think you'll hear a lot of Mike's personal um, uh, feelings and mood uh, and it's very emotional for him and. Um, I, I mean, I think he's an amazing lyricist, an amazing vocalist, but um, I, I don't think there's a theme to the to the EP in full, um, other than you know just sort of trying to connect with people who have probably felt fucked over at one point in their life, which is probably everybody. So it's kind of the universal message of you know love, hate, death, and all of that. Um, and uh, you know, people will draw from what they want, but but you know, it's I think a lot of lyrics are very personal to Mike, but uh, but are certainly relatable to a lot of people. Um, what you know, what we'd like people to take away from it is is you know whatever they want. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's, it sounds kind of cliche, but I mean. You know, music is very personal to people, and if if they like it, they like it. If they don't, I respect that. You know, but um, I, you know what I would you know what I would describe to people who haven't heard it is, you know, it's it's loud, it's uh, it's it's melodic, it's uh, it's got a lot of groove, it's got a lot of heart, uh, and it's got a lot of real um, real kick to it. Um, so you know, to compare it to something like. You know, something that people might know is like a, you know, like I said earlier, like a helmet or a sound guard, maybe a little edgier than that, but it's sort of in that vein. Nice. Very cool. Well, um, since we're talking about your new music, are you guys planning on any tours to support the new EP? Uh, we don't have anything booked right now, but last winter we did uh, we did the crazy thing the bands do in Canada, which is touring in February. And uh, touring in February in Canada is, um, if if not risky in terms of your own personal safety, it's risky in terms of getting people out. But you know there are places where people nobody tours in Canada in February. Well, very few big fans tour in February in Canada, uh, so it kind of opens up the market. So um, we may do something crazy like that again. Who knows? Um, We'll, uh, we'll have to talk about that, but uh, we, we did a, a CD release in Windsor uh, two weeks ago. Um, we played in Toronto with Pop Evil uh, a couple uh, last Friday. Uh, that was a great show. We, we did really well at that show, and uh, we love playing with bands like that. We played with Nothing More. We played with Hell Yeah. We oh, played with Texas City great, Polish. And, um, I mean, those shows for us are amazing because, you know, um, it, it introduces us to a whole other audience, and, uh, and it it, without fail. You as well. Yeah, well, and without fail, we we do, you know, we get people, new fans out of those shows. So um, so our tour is kind of our, a combination of, you know, literally touring and then, you know, sort of hitching on with, with bands that are touring bills, and, and those are always a lot of fun for us, too. Awesome. Well, do you guys have, like, a routine, like, that's something special that you do before you go on stage or right after you get um, off or... Yeah, I mean, the, our, our ritual lately has become, we, we stand in a prayer circle and we pray for Scott's bass rig to work. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because poor Scott has the worst, the absolute worst luck with his bass gear. So we, we now get in a circle and we put our hands in and we pray to, you know, whatever God we're believing in on that day that, you know, the, the bass rig works. Uh, probably the God of Thunder would be the best God to pray to in that case. Um, but, uh, so no, we, but we, 
<laughs> yeah, so we, we I mean, our, our pre-gig ritual is really just to sort of just, you know, go through the set list, talk to each other and say, you know, good show, guys, let's do this. And um, we don't have anything more formal than Which that, really. probably feel like a homecoming to you guys because, like I said, you live so far away. So when you do see each other, it's like, hey, buddy, what's up? How you been? <laughs> Yeah, very, very much so. There is a lot of that for sure. Uh, I mean, with the Pop Evil show, um, you know, we hadn't seen each other in, except for a couple weeks beforehand. So uh, it was uh, it was good to see you guys again. Oh, I bet. Sorry, I thought I turned that off before the interview. And now that keeps going off, I'm like, all right then. <laughs> of course, it never rings when I'm not doing anything else. We all know this. <laughs> um, so, um, what, what do you have any guilty pleasures? Like when you get off there, what's something that you miss? That miss? You know, maybe you're, maybe you're. I don't know how to really describe it, right? Right. Um, no, we, we don't. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, we probably have individual guilty pleasures, um, in terms of, you know, the music we listen to or the, you know, the TV shows we watch. Um, but no, we don't have, we don't have a band reason. What's yours personally? Like when you get on tour, what do you always go for? Um, God, uh, I, I'm I, I'm the token I'm the token vegetarian man, so I always you know my 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 first mission is always to find somewhere to eat other than like a Wendy's baked potato. Um, so uh, you know I, I guess my guiltiest of guilty pleasures is like ice cream. Good flavor. Air. Uh, I'm chocolate. Boring. <laughs> I like vanilla. I just like boring. Just boring. <laughs> It's so is as a band it's, it's, though, is there in, anything that you guys feel compassionate about? Like as a whole, like, as a whole maybe one particular topic one particular that you all feel No, in terms of in terms of topics, no. I mean, you know, um we we you know, it's funny, we've, we've never actually sat around as a band and talked about politics, for example. We've never as a band sat and talked about God. I couldn't tell you after 25 years of knowing Scott and Tom what their religious or political it's beliefs are. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, but, but uh, I mean, you know, I mean, we're largely sort of apolitical and, and not really, you know, uh, religious in that way, I guess. But, um, you know, it's... Uh, uh, you know, um, the common the common bond of the band is you know just playing songs that we can all uh, that we can write together and we can you know create together and that we can perform together. That's you know that sounds corny probably, but I no, mean it's I it's just, I mean, it's you know I've never heard like, it put that way before. I think that's a great answer. Yeah, but I mean, like, I mean, you know, like I said earlier, I mean, we come from such different places musically that, you know, that finding the common ground is crawl. I mean, that, that literally is our common ground, that and, you know, a good night out of, you know, drinking and hanging out. We, we don't do that nearly enough. We got to do it a few weeks ago. We were doing some photos and video in, uh, in Windsor for, uh, for a night and uh, we, we went out as a band and we had an amazing time. And we don't get to do that enough because of distance, but yeah. um, but it always comes back to you know just the, the love of the music and being able to sort of sit in a room with each other and play it. <laughs> right on. Well, uh, could, is there any advice that you would give to today's expiring musicians, considering you've been around for twenty five years and seeing how it's changed? Well, I, I would actually like some advice from bands like younger bands that are making it today, because you know it's not like the old days when when we started. You know, it was the, you know, you did a demo, you tried to get a major label deal, you tried to get managers, you tried to get publishing deals, you tried to book tours or agents and all. Like that was, you know, you did it that way, right? Um, you know, when, when we reformed, uh, the landscape had changed significantly and self-releasing music uh, and the whole world of major labels had changed radically. You know, major labels are very small now. Uh, they don't, you know, own the market the way they used to, and a lot of bands are making it um, just by, you know, you know, lucking in either lucking into a good video or something that goes viral, or having a really catchy song that someone just hears on YouTube and says, "Wow, that's amazing." Um, I mean, you know, these were not options when we started. You didn't put a song on YouTube and hope 
someone important heard it, you had to actually go knocking on doors. And we did a lot of door knocking. It paid off. I mean, we did we did relatively well. Um, but uh, so I would I'd actually like to flip that and hear from bands giving you know old guys like us advice okay. on how Everybody to make it. Everybody who watches this, things. if you have any advice for them, let them know. <laughs> um, we'll go um, ahead and tell everybody it's going to be on Base Radio Australia sromaginc.com that is I-N-C and it will be on evstarmusic.com um, and that's spelled E-V-I-E um, and it will also be on our mixed cloud account as well as our YouTube my personal YouTube is E V Star Rocks SRO Magazines is SRO Mag Inc again so it, you can and rewind, and pause, play this as many times as you need to to get those. Theirs is Crawl Rocks for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Website, yeah. Crawl Rocks, backslash, Crawl Rocks, every account. Which makes it very cool because it's a lot easier to find to get that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, any shout outs that you like to give or say anybody you want to say hi to or anything? Sorry, any what? Shout outs or anybody you like to say hi to? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we've got, we've made some, some great new friends since we reformed the band. Um, you know, a lot of the bands that we played back in the day are no more. Um, but we've, we've made a lot of great new friends. Uh, like I mentioned, a guy named Chad Valier earlier, uh, who introduced us to my, uh, he's got a band called Valier, V-A-L-Y-E-A-R. Um, check them out. They're, they're awesome. He's just, uh, getting a new drummer in, in shape and then he'll be ready to rock some more. Um, there are a lot of other bands, a band out of London called Swerve that we played with a few times. Um, I'm going to get killed because I'm going to forget a whole bunch of uh, bands. So I'm just going to stop because if I, if I mention a few, I don't mention them all. Shout but, out to all uh, our band buddies. <laughs> but, but also to, you know, uh, we also have to give shout outs to our friends and families who, um, you know, put up with a lot of, you know, we're in different places in our lives now, right? Like, you know, a lot of guys in the band have family and, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, to, to get away and, you know, record and play and tour and do shows out of town and all of that stuff. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a lot to ask of them and, and they've been super supportive. Um, we've got some amazing family and friends in Windsor who, uh, you know, who we wouldn't be doing any of this without them because every time we do a show in Windsor, you know, two, three hundred of them show up and that's always amazing. So, um, so it's a lot of bands. We'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll solicit the guys and we'll get a list of bands together. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll share all their links and things. Um, cause there are a bunch of bands that we would like people to check out for sure. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's pretty much all I have for you. So I just want to say thank you for the interview and talking to me and, I can't wait for you guys to get to America, so I can actually see play. Yeah, we uh, we would love to if uh, if anyone out there can help the us with some show. <laughs> What's that? Come down to the other other Florida. <laughs> yeah, the other Florida for sure. We'd love to. I mean, we played in uh, we played in New York um, uh, last summer. We uh, we went down to Long Island and played in uh, Twisted Sisters rehearsal space, which was kind of interesting yeah. uh, for for an internet radio show. Um, with um, uh, with, a, with a bunch of other very different bands. That was kind of cool. But So, yeah, we, we'd love to come down and play some shows there. We, we'd love to. Awesome. Well, I can't. I'm looking forward to it, and I will keep spinning your EP on my show and making sure to help you get the word out there. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. That's great. No problem. Our pleasure. We have okay. Carrie Stewart and the Stewart Grain of Crawl. Make sure you check it out at Crawl Rocks. <laughs> Thank you for talking to me, Stuart. And you have a great Thank day. Thank you. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye bye.